Oliver and the sea wigs. If this adventure is undertaken far too lightly, the reader hereby dismisses the authors from all responsibility for untimely death or injury due to drowning, kidnapping by sea monkeys or general unexpected disappearances. Chapter 1. Oliver Crisp was only 10 years old, but they had been a busy and exciting 10 years because Oliver's mother and father were explorers. They had met on top of Mount Everest. They had been married at the lost temple of Amenhotep and had spent their honeymoon searching for the elephant's graveyard. And when young Oliver was born, they simply bought themselves a bat carrier and an off-road baby buggy and went right on exploring. But at last, there came a day when Mr and Mrs Crisp realised there was just nothing left to explore. They had trekked to the headwaters of all the great rivers and stood on the summits of all the unconquered mountains. Thanks to them, the lost city of Proper Copper Kettle was lost no longer. The mystery of the Mekele and Bembe marshes had been solved. There were no more blank spaces left on the map. So they packed their belongings aboard their explorer mobile and drove home to the house which they owned but had hardly ever lived in, by Deep Water Bay, near the little seaside town of St Porrox. No more exploring for us, they told each other sadly. It's time we settled down. Oliver wasn't sad though. He was excited. He was tired of living the explorer's life. The house he was coming home to was one he'd only seen on holidays, brief two-week breaks before fresh expeditions. Ten years on the move, no time to make friends or feel at home anywhere. No time to go to school. He never even had a proper bedroom of his own, just a bunk in the back of the Explorer mobile, and all his things were hidden away in trunks and storage boxes in the spaces under the Explorer mobile seats. He thought it would be exciting to have a whole house to live in and wake up every day to the same view. At Deepwater Bay, he would have his own bedroom and bathroom and he would be starting next term at the school in St Porrox. That might not sound so good to you, but Oliver had never been to school and he was excited about that too. He perched between his parents as Mum steered the Explorer mobile carefully along the winding lanes. He was waiting for the moment when Deepwater Bay came into sight. It's not a very pretty house, his mother reminded him. It's really rather old and creaky and the wind blows right through it. It needs lots of work doing, but we never found the time or the money. There's not a lot of money in exploring. OK said Oliver, but he didn't stop feeling excited. They came over a sudden headland and there it was. The blue bay all dotted with shaggy steep-sided islands. The house stood at the top of the beach. It was big and grey, with orange lichen dappling its roof. Wow, said Oliver. Wow, said his dad. Wow! said his mum, stopping the Explorer mobile on a curve of the steep lane and just sitting there staring in sheer amazement. Wow, they all three said again. Oliver was pleased that his parents sounded just as thrilled as he was. Then he looked at them and saw that it was not the house that they were looking at, but all those scruffy islands in the bay. Where have they come from? asked his father. I don't remember them. Mum was rustling the map. They are not marked here, she gasped. Nine, ten, fifteen, Dad muttered. They must be new islands. Volcanic, probably. Unmapped, said Mum. Uncharted, said Dad. Unexplored, they whispered, both together. Oliver sighed. He'd seen them like this before, whenever they heard of a vanished city or a forbidden tomb. Still, he thought, at least they can explore these islands from home. He looked happily at the house, while Mum, with her eyes on the island, started the exploring mobile again and took it screeching down the zigzag lane to the beach.